My uninterruptible power supply was interrupted the other day. Uh, it made kind of a noise, and then my computer died. Uh, which, of course, is not desirable operation for a UPS. Now, I suspected the battery was probably at the end of its service life and had caused the unit to fail during self-test. I question the design decisions that lead to a UPS dropping its load if it fails self-test. Uh, a large commercial unit would typically go into bypass mode at worst, but from what I can tell, this is normal behavior for the little ones you can put under your desk. Suspecting the battery, I popped that out to check. And while doing that, I noticed a lot of heat and a bit of smell coming from the unit. So I decided a teardown was in order to investigate. As you can see, it's got a nice metal enclosure. Uh, this big transformer is only used by the inverter. No line interactive on this old beast. Uh, there's a nice space for the battery here. And uh, just this one big PCB for everything else sits in here uh, like so. Let's take a look at the board. Uh, this is delightfully old school, uh, all through hole. Uh, so the AC power passes through here. Um, it looks like some surge suppression and filtering. Um, you know, basic, basic stuff there. Um, plus there's a DC supply. You got the transformer and looks like a bridge rectifier and such here. Uh, for charging the battery, just you know, I don't think it's even regulated. Just simple, uh, probably current limited. Maybe that's what these power resistors are for. Um, this relay here um, is going to switch the output from line to inverter when necessary. A crude but effective. And over here, are the control circuits. Um, what really delights me about this is there's no microcontroller. Um, this SG3524 PWM controller is the most complicated chip in the thing. Other than that, you know, you've got like some little logic, uh, 4001, a 4011, a 339 comparator, uh, Schmidt triggers, some discretes. Um, I'm guessing this guy's a linear regulator. Um, the control electronics all run off the battery directly. Um, <laughs> these fuses protect the battery and they're, they're just like soldered in place. Uh, I guess it'd be kind of tricky to service. Uh, these switching elements here on the heat sinks, uh, the MOSFETs I suppose, are going to dump current from the battery into the primary on that big transformer, uh, first one way and then the other. Uh, I'm guessing that's what the PWM controller is doing. Um, do you think it's doing anything fancy like a modified sine wave? I'm not sure I'd count on it. The control logic must be all comparators in RC time constants. Uh, these trimmers here probably adjust all of that. Uh, there's a serial port, but uh, clearly it doesn't support data. I think it just activates one of the control lines when the power fails. Uh, maybe a second one when the battery is low? I don't know. Sounds kind of fancy. So what went wrong? Everything looks okay and seems to work. The battery is clearly shot, only reading 4 volts despite having been on a charger. My guess is that one or more of the cells shorted out, probably during heavy charging after a power outage a few weeks ago. Uh, this poor transformer here was too hot to touch when I opened the unit up and it seems to have been the source of the smell. Even so, everything seems to be alright. I could probably put this unit back into service with a new battery, but since I'm spending some money one way or the other, I decided to order a newer unit that's line interactive, meaning it has an auto transformer and can buck or boost if the line voltage goes out of spec. That's nice if you just have a simple brownout. More importantly, the new units have a USB jack and can let your computer know it's time to shut down cleanly when the power goes out. I might keep this old guy for a while and see if I can think of something neat to do with it. I know I'll miss the nice metal case. I like to rest my feet on it and warm my toes. But the new ones are all plastic. That's it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts or questions, leave those down below. And if this is the kind of thing you're into, hit that subscribe button.